Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. And today what we're going to dive into is how to use FTK Imager. FTK Imager is a free tool, been available a while, a great way to take disk and memory images. So let's hop right in. So FTK Imager, formerly it was owned by Access Data, Xtero bought Access Data, so now you get FTK Imager from the Xtero website, but like I said, it's a free download. You do have to provide your contact details, um, but it's a great tool for doing disk images and memory images um, on Windows and on other platforms. The version we're talking about today is going to be the Windows version, um, but it is available for other platforms. What it's capable of doing is doing various types of disk images, everything from physical images where you're doing a byte by byte copy to logical where you're capturing everything you can see kind of as a user, um, files and folders and all that, um, down to imaging CDs and DVDs. It also can capture memory and page files. So if you're doing memory analysis, one way of do, uh, capturing memory to use in volatility or another free tool, um, FTK is one great option for that. Um, you can also mount image files. So if you take that image before and you need to analyze it, you can use FTK Imager to mount that drive. FTK does also work through things like write blockers through other tools. So very powerful tool. And again, it comes at a great price of free. So um, yeah, so so we're going to talk about how to capture disk and memory images today. We're going to walk through kind of the steps to do both. It's pretty straightforward, but we wanted to provide commentary along the way. Um, so if you're doing this, definitely follow along, pause it as you go. Um, and if you have questions, drop them below and we'll try to answer them. So first, FTK Imager does need to be installed. To do this, you're going to need admin access, um, but install FTK Imager and then you should be able to open it up. For today's talk, we're going to be interested in two features under the file menu, main, mainly create disk image and capture memory. Again, these are the two features we're talking about. So to create a disk image, um, first you're going to run FT, or you're going to install FTK. You're going to run it as admin on our Windows 10 box that we were putting this together with. Um, FTK actually did prompt for admin when it boots up. So Spoiler alert, you do need admin. Make sure you have admin to the box. Um, when you go to actually capture, you're going to have those options to do physical. Like we said, this is the common one where it's a bit by bit copy of the storage device. You can also do logical, right? Which is this is going to create a disk image of all the files and folders that FTK can get to under your permission set. Um, and so it's going to vary to that point, right? There are things admin can get to, there are things a system user can get to. Um, and so it's important when you're doing logical to realize that um, you're going to be limited by the permissions of that user on the given box. You can do an image file so you can actually feed image files in. Um, if you're deconstructing files, this is super useful. You can do it on an individual folder. Um, so similar to the logical side or they support these for Nico devices for also doing CDD, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. So again, when you look at disk imaging and when you look at creating a disk image, FTK has a ton of features for that. So the first step you're going to do once you collect or once you select do the physical images, you're going to have to select the volume that you actually want to image. Um, in this case, if you're going through a write blocker, um, you know, you would select how that write blocker is actually mounted, how it's plugged in. In this case, we see, hey, a physical drive, it's a VMware virtual disk, it actually gives you that metadata there. Um, but your first step is to say, hey, what drive are you actually going to capture? Once you do that, you then that create image box pops up and here you're actually able to take multiple images um, of a given drive at the same time. So what you're going to do is you're going to click add under that create image. You're going to create the, or select the image type you want to create. Commonly, so raw format, if you're using DD, this is doing again the raw bit by bit copy. But there are other file formats that are useful. The EO1, um, which I think is an in case um, format, but it's also common with a lot of tools like SleuthKit and just other forensic tools out there. It has other useful metadata in it. There's Smart, there's a APF. 
you know, different file formats. I commonly use E01 on this step. Um, but again, select your image type and this will be what, you know, the destination image of when FTK takes the image. This will be the format that it's written out to. You then select the destination. On the image destination, something important to know is you can't image a drive onto itself, right? Um, so in this case, right, this might be an external drive if you plug in a USB and image. This might be, you know, some other maybe section, network drive, something else. Watch if you're doing a network drive. Remember, it's going over the network. It's going to take bandwidth. Um, but you're going to set the destination folder to then put that image. You can set things like fragmentation. You can set things like compression. Because again, depending on the size of this volume, um, it could get pretty big, right? And especially if you're doing a logical volume that's spread across a bunch of disks, this could be a very, very big image, right? So just be mindful of that. You can add the evidence metadata. So like we said, in the EO1 images, you have evidence metadata like case number, evidence number, um, examiner notes. Um, this is where kind of, this is where that metadata is going to be set in the file. Um, and then finally, when you set that image destination, right? Um, you know, this is where you're going to set it to where it actually can write out. So um, you can add metadata and compression to each output. So once you hit, we'll actually go back one. Once you actually hit finish, um, it's going to give you the option actually to capture and do the image. Um, I think if we go back here, yep. So then you can say, okay, start the capture, right? And it'll actually do the capture, it'll drop the file out and you'll be good to go. So that, that covered the taking a disk image side. Again, it was a few steps, it's mostly known what to do. Big things to know about with disk image, right? Are you compressing it? What's the file format you need to do? If you're using other tools, what file format works best with those tools? There might be some you want DD. There might be others that they prefer EO1s or they work better. Um, just be mindful of that as you work through. Memory images are easier than disk images. So there's not as many options in here. Um, when you go to the file menu and you choose the take a memory image, um, you set the destination path, um, you set the file name of that. You can include the page file if you want and then also create that AD1 file. Um, again, depending on tools you're using, if you're using kind of the paid version of FTK, um, that AD1 file comes in handy or other tools that actually handle that. Uh, but then you hit the capture memory button and it's going to go in and actually again dump memory, um, you know, and produce that image out. So um, AD1, like we said, it is an access data proprietary evidence file format, but it might be supported by the tools you use. But believe it or not, this is all it takes to capture memory. Um, we aren't going to talk to, about how to analyze it this time. Um, we'll probably save that future ones, but spoiler alert, you can just take this image and actually drop it into volatility, drop it into most major tools, um, and it'll do you know, all of the work basically from there or um, generate the data out of that. So again, this was a quick talk. We wanted to cover how to do disk images, how to do memory images using FTK Imager. Again, FTK Imager is a free tool. Um, it's available out on the Xero site. Um, let us know if you have questions. Let us know what um, works for you. If you have other favorite captured tools, we'd also love to hear about those. But thanks for tuning in this week. We hope to see you back next week.